Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dryer Days Art Studio. I'm Catherine, and I'm so happy to have you here with me today. This is the resin geode piece that I'll be working on in this video. I just love it. I named it Iceland, and it, I just think it, it really reminds me of ice and cold and just the beautiful landscape of Iceland. So I really hope you enjoy this video. Everything that I use, my tools and supplies, are down in the description of this video, including this epoxy sculpt that I use. And I use this to create my barriers on the piece so that I can keep my resin contained, and this stuff has really changed the way I make my geodes. So here from this aerial shot, you can see those lines on the piece are the epoxy sculpt. On two of them, I did uh, glue on some silver glitter, and now I'm just laying down paint for where I know that I sort of want these type of colors to be in these areas. And that really helps me in the planning process because with the resin, you know, you're given a certain amount of working time and it just really helps to have this prep work done. And then your pieces turn out beautifully and it's just so crucial to do this prep work beforehand. I am laying my stones in with hot glue. You can lay them in and just pour resin on them too. I prefer to do it this way this time because I was using actual crystal quartz stones mixed in with my shattered glass. Um, I, my husband had gotten me these crack your own geodes from Kentucky and when I cracked them open, I had a bunch of little extra pieces and I thought these will work great in my geodes. So I'm sort of layering them in here and that's why I was using my hot glue gun because I, I sort of wanted to plot them out. And this is just me doing a time lapse of my first layer of resin on this piece. I usually do about two layers. So following along with the color guidelines that I gave myself, I am laying in this paint. Now I do wanna say that the paint that I used initially that I laid down on the base, I saved them in the little cups there to the left and I have lids for them. And I put the lids on to save the paint. Now when I went in and mixed up my resin, I have this pre-made paint with all the colors I had already used and it was just super handy. I just added a teeny bit to my resin and had these beautiful colors. So now I'm just taking off that first tape boundary and softening my edges a little bit with my heat gun and blending them in. This is about two to three hours after I had done that first layer. So two to three hours after I did that first layer, I pulled the tape off and I'm softening the edges and moving it all around the sides there. And here I am going in to do my second layer because some of the areas were just kind of boring and dull and I wanted to add a little something extra. And you stick just a little bit of silver paint on the tip of that stick there and that is what I mix into my little resin cup so you only want about 10% of paint to put in with your resin and it's a nice consistency you can see there not totally opaque but but, but pretty good gives it and that's a metallic silver so it's not going to be necessarily 100% opaque either unless I added a ton in there sorry for the top of my head <laughs> So I'm just laying down a little bit of clear resin because I liked that green under there, but I wanted to add a little bit of this silver. So I add the clear so that you can still see that green coming through. continue through using that technique of putting in the clear resin over the spots that I'm happy with and then once that clear resin is down I will add the ribbons of the other color so in this section I do add a little ribbon of black because I wanted a little bit more dimension I didn't want this so green I wanted it to kind of have that icy snowy look and I didn't want it to be too green but I love that sort of teal turquoise color 
and so here I go in with a little bit of black and when you hit this with the heat gun it'll really make cells pop out with these colors you'll get some lacing effects it's really beautiful in the areas where I don't plan on adding any more colors I am just going to go in and fill it in with um, just the clear um, resin because I like to have an even surface and I don't like to have any sort of gaps in the resin I, You know these pieces by nature are going to be more textured and not have a completely flat surface unless you just keep adding and adding and adding clear resin But um, I like my texture to be where the stones are or the glitter is I don't like there to be a whole lot of um, gaps and differences between my resin and that's just personal preference After I've gotten my resin where I want it, I do come in and I hit each layer of the resin with the heat gun two to three times to make sure all those bubbles are popped. I use stone coat countertop resin and this stuff is amazing. It is self leveling, it's non yellowing, it is just beautiful. I get the best results with this stuff and I just make sure to come in two or three times to get all those bubbles popped. And the only time I've ever had any imperfections with this stuff is if I don't cover my piece properly and I maybe get some dust in or a particle will fall in but this stuff really if you use it correctly equal parts and come in with that heat two or three times it will level beautifully for you and of course come in and just keep swiping those underneath edges I could have taped these sides again too I probably would do that again next time and pull it off after two to three hours and hit it with the heat but that's how it went and here I do just come in with my uni Posca pens again those markers anything that you need is down in the description these just work fantastic on resin. They're just beautiful. And the nice thing is if you're going along working with these and you make a mistake, you can just wipe it off and start again. I will use white, black, and silver on this piece with my markers. And um, it just adds that those beautiful fine lines in there to give it that geode look. putting a final clear coat over the entire thing after my lines are nice and dry and where I want them. This is just an icing comb that I got in a kit and I use that to smooth it all over the place and again hitting it with that heat two or three times. I just wanted to show these little um, 
painters pyramids they come in super handy when you're doing resin you can find those in the description just very very handy when doing resin and here it is 100% dry I just love it. I think it's beautiful. This is one of my favorite pieces. It's so hard to do it justice with the videos and the pictures, but this is really a gorgeous piece and I am very proud of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Come find my Facebook group, Acrylic Pouring and Fluid Painting, and find me on Instagram at Dryer Days. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, keep on pouring.